big data and artificial intelligence are becoming ubiquitous in everything we do today. I spoke with Ericsson Chan, CEO of Ping On Technology, to find out about some of their latest advances and how it can change our lives. Ericsson, Ping On Technology is one of 32 companies under the Ping On Group. Do you produce technology only for your companies or do you do it for other companies as well? Originally, we only service Ping An Group. But over time, because the group is growing so big, about two years ago, we start to offer these kind of services to other companies. By now, we have uh, 250 corporate customers. About 40 of them are banks. So what types of technologies do you produce for these companies? The usual fintech, uh, like robo-advisory, or lending, peer-to-peer -peer lending, and so we do them all, but the difference is that we focus a lot more on artificial intelligence. Can you tell me a little bit about how you have developed, how your company has developed facial recognition to be used in financial institutions or, or insurance? When you do a PIN, uh, ID and PIN, it's just not as convenient. Uh, even though someone would be using a, a, a fingerprint, but we took a different path because we want to focus on customer experience, and we start to look at uh, facial recognition. At June this year, we have hit the uh, world number one. At uh, accuracy rate is 99.8 percent, and now is a uh, really embedded in many use cases. Uh, uh, just this year alone, uh, is a uh, 300 million times is being used. Can you use it for kind of know your client? types of things if you are maybe banking or or if you're getting insurance uh, previously you would need to uh, come to one of the uh, retail branch to to apply for a personal loan uh, but today you just need to use an app uh, use an app then you can take a photo of your id and when we have a conversation with the uh, uh, through video conference it will automatically recognize if you are the same person on the id so that is make it a lot seamless today with all these technology it will take only three minutes end to end money will be in your account tell me a little bit about how the ai facial recognition works what can it read we can even tell uh, I wouldn't say is uh, uh, you can tell if you're lying, but at least we know if you're happy or if you're sad through not just a print but a motion, because every face uh, uh, the standard is uh, there are 44 different micro movement we can measure the machine can measure, and every movement it will illustrate the mental state uh, right. of a human being already. So I have to try this technology. <laughs> we can, we can, we can try that. So right now I have to register. What yes. do I do? Take a photo. Okay. Uh, I guess I look yes. there. Fine. So the, the, the computer already know if you are you or, or mm. if it's me. It's telling me that I'm fearful. <laughs> no, you're very <laughs> happy. happy. And these are all the things that it, it measures. That's amazing. Yeah, it measures every single little movement of your face. Yeah. And at the same time, not only about uh, capturing your face, but mm -hmm. also capturing your voice print. How can AI be used for car insurance? We will able to analyze your driving behavior. So uh, just by having a phone in the pocket and how you drive and help you to be a better driver and safer driver. And once we get to know you better, and then we will try to uh, provide a service that will fit you. But if you do uh, get insurance, you do get an accident, you can take a few photos of your car, uh, the damage uh, part of your car. It will give you an estimate how much it will cost to fix your car. So if you agree and then, hey, this is about right, you tap it, and in a matter of uh, seconds or minutes, and your, the reimbursement will hit, uh, you'll go straight to your bank account. During a typhoon uh, not long ago, uh, and in Guangdong area, one of our customers uh, took a few photos while the typhoon is still there, and then upload the damage of uh, his car. And before the typhoon left, the money is already in the account. You say uh, it, can, um, it can tell what kind of a driver you are. It will able to tell, like, uh, 
uh, every corner, like uh, if if which corner you you take a uh, you, you you press the brake too hard or you make a right or, or, or accelerate too too much, and, and it will give you a report card almost. And it kind of helps to choose what kind of premium you're going to pay, I suppose. I would say is help you us to give you a better discount. Oh, it's so <laughs> <laughs> How are you developing? technology in the medical sector. Medical is still the same thing. You can uh, look at your face, look at your thumb, like Chinese medicine, will look at your thumbnail and tongue, and there's similar technologies. Can you have a, like a Chinese medicine doctor as an app? We do that. Uh, it, it, it is an app that one of the uh, apps that we offer is called Good Doctor. So it's a telemedicine. So instead of uh, having you to uh, meet the doctor face to face, we can do consultation uh, through the app already. How far do you think this technology can be developed to? I would say sky is the limit these days with the artificial intelligence. As the, because this is a self-learning uh, engine. Now artificial intelligence give the program as much data as possible and then give them a direction and then they will figure out the pattern and learn it and from uh, uh, perception to prediction and ultimately prescribe a solution for the user. We're talking about machines learning. Do we have to worry that there will be a rise of the machines? In the near future, first of all, there's many aspects of a human being cannot be replaced uh, by machines. Uh, certain feelings, emotional state, uh, cannot be uh, replaced by machine. And no matter how smart the machine can go, I don't think the, the day uh, that is a foreseeable future, machine will be taking over the world. No. <laughs> okay. Not to worry. Don't worry. <laughs> not in my lifetime, at least. <laughs> I, I hope not. <laughs> the future can